Steven Spielberg's Jaws, a cinematic masterpiece, is widely celebrated for its iconic moments. One memorable scene involves Quint, a seasoned shark hunter, recounting the tragic sinking of the USS Indianapolis during July 1945. After a Japanese submarine attack, hundreds of American sailors were left stranded in the Pacific Ocean's chilly waters. The harrowing monologue concludes with the stark reality, 1,100 men went into the water, only 316 came out. The sharks claimed the rest. While Jaws is largely Hollywood fiction, this scene is rooted in historical truth. The USS Indianapolis did sink in 1945, and due to significant delays in the rescue mission, it's considered one of the deadliest shark attacks in history. The USS Indianapolis, beyond its tragic demise, held a significant role in history. Originating during peacetime, it became Franklin D. Roosevelt's unofficial ship of state. As World War II erupted, it became the flagship of an unparalleled fleet, engaging in major Pacific theater battles. Surviving encounters that should have spelled its doom against Japanese kamikaze pilots the Indianapolis embarked on a top-secret mission crucial to ending World War II. This remarkable ship's story transcends its sinking, leaving an indelible mark on history as it sailed the seven seas. Construction of the USS Indianapolis, a Portland-class heavy cruiser, commenced almost a century ago in 1930. Despite its modern warship appearance, this vessel, weighing a substantial 10,000 tons and measuring 186 meters long, was a marvel of its time. To put things in perspective, it surpassed Big Ben's height and equaled the weight of the Eiffel Tower. Powered by steam, the Indianapolis boasted an impressive operational range of 15,000 miles, enabling it to circumnavigate the globe without refueling. In its early days, the ship undertook missions such as escorting Franklin D. Roosevelt on a South American tour, marked by the President's memorable Crossing the Line ceremony. For those unfamiliar, crossing the line is a naval tradition marking a sailor's first equator crossing at sea. Often seen as an opportunity for humor and initiation rites, this ceremony involves rookies dressing up and engaging in playful seawater fueled antics. Even the powerful Franklin D. Roosevelt, then the world's most influential figure, was not exempt. His participation, captured aboard the USS Indianapolis, showcased him pleading his case before a mock court led by the fictional King Neptune. Amid the whimsical ceremonies, a sobering reality loomed, as Adolf Hitler's actions across the Atlantic were pushing the world into the chaos of World War II, which the US had yet to enter. The USS Indianapolis, stationed at Pearl Harbor during the infamous Japanese attack, happened to be far from the chaos as it was engaged in a training exercise on an uninhabited island 800 miles away. Shortly after the attack, the US officially entered World War II, and over the next four years, the Indianapolis played a crucial role in nearly every major Pacific theater engagement, earning an impressive 10 battle stars. Serving as the flagship of the powerful 5th Fleet under Vice Admiral Raymond Spruance, the ship was on its way to becoming one of the most decorated American warships. However, on March 31, 1945, a fateful encounter with a Japanese kamikaze plane altered its course. The ship had been bombarding Okinawa's beach defenses in preparation for a U.S. invasion when the kamikaze plane suddenly emerged, heading straight for the ship. After the Indianapolis survived the kamikaze attack, the ship suffered substantial damage. The Japanese pilot's bomb, dropped at an incredibly close altitude of 7.5 meters, found its target on the Indianapolis's deck. The bomb penetrated through the mess hall and fuel tanks before creating an exit wound in the ship's bottom and detonating in the water below. The fortunate timing of the bomb's explosion just a second or two later allowed the USS Indianapolis to avoid catastrophic destruction. Despite the significant damage sustained, the ship managed to limp back to the naval shipyard at Mare Island for emergency repairs. In an unexpected twist of fate, this situation placed the USS Indianapolis in a strategic position. At the right place and the right time, the ship was assigned one of the most crucial naval missions of not just the Second World War, but of all time. Over the previous three years, a group of brilliant scientists had been diligently working on the development of what would become the most destructive weapon ever conceived by humanity, the atomic bomb. By the summer of 1945, the USS Indianapolis was tasked with transporting components of this historic and devastating weapon. The Manhattan Project was nearing completion, 
and the time was approaching to unleash a new form of devastation on Japan in the hope of ending the war. Two atomic bombs, codenamed Little Boy and Fat Man, were ready for deployment. However, both bombs were constructed at Los Alamos in New Mexico. To carry out the planned bombings in Japan, the bombs needed transportation, which was no simple task. These were highly experimental and unprecedented weapons, and there were genuine concerns about the potential premature detonation of these city-destroying bombs. To ensure safety, the weapons of mass destruction, or WMDs, were shipped in a dismantled state. Some parts were transported by air, while others were sent by sea. The USS Indianapolis, being the biggest, fastest, and most formidable ship in the area at the time, was entrusted with transporting, among other things, the most crucial component of Little Boy, the enriched uranium core. This cargo was of utmost importance, considering the destructive potential of the atomic bombs. The Indianapolis played a pivotal role in transporting the components that would contribute to the deployment of these historic and devastating weapons. The USS Indianapolis faced a monumental and classified mission as it departed from Hunter's Point Naval Shipyard in San Francisco. Inside the ship were the components for Little Boy, including roughly half of the world's total supply of enriched uranium. The cargo was so highly classified that even the ship's captain was unaware of its nature. The journey began just three hours after the first ever successful detonation of an atomic bomb in the Trinity Test. The USS Indianapolis set course for the Tinian Islands, located 1,500 miles south of Japan, where the bombs were needed. Remarkably, the ship completed this 6,000-mile journey across the Pacific Ocean in just 10 days. As history recalls, on August 6, 1945, Little Boy was loaded onto the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress named the Enola Gay and dropped on the city of Hiroshima. Three days later, Fat Man was detonated over Nagasaki, and six days after that, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's surrender to the Allies. While the world celebrated the end of the war, the crew of the USS Indianapolis faced a tragic fate. After delivering its deadly cargo to Tinian Island, the ship was directed to Guam and then the Philippines. Unfortunately, while en route to the Philippines, the USS Indianapolis encountered a devastating tragedy. The days following the sinking of the USS Indianapolis were marked by terror as the crew faced a relentless threat from oceanic white tip and tiger sharks. Sharks were spotted as the sun rose and for the next four days the crew endured blood-curdling screams as these predators circled and picked off the survivors one by one. The situation was already dire, with extreme temperatures in the western Pacific pushing 40 degrees during the day and cold enough at night to induce hypothermia. The intense sunlight reflecting off the water rendered the men nearly blind during the day. Dehydration became a severe issue, and in their desperation, some survivors resorted to drinking seawater, hastening their demise. Survivors experienced extreme physical and mental conditions including delirium and vivid hallucinations due to dehydration. With little to eat or drink and suffering from severe saltwater ulcers that became infected, the men were pushed to the brink of what the human body could endure. Some survivors turned on each other, attacking or even drowning fellow crew members. Throughout these grueling conditions, the sharks remained a constant threat, always circling. The exact number of men taken by sharks is unknown, with conservative estimates around 30, but some believe it may have been higher, possibly up to 150. The true toll of the sharks' attacks during these harrowing days remains uncertain. By the morning of August 2nd, three and a half days after the USS Indianapolis sank, a stroke of good fortune occurred that significantly impacted the fate of the survivors. A U.S. spot plane engaged in routine patrols to detect Japanese submarines spotted a large oil slick and what appeared to be men in the water within it. The crew reported their findings and a few hours later, Lieutenant Adrian Marks arrived at the scene in a seaplane to investigate further. Marks brought his Catalina flying boat low to get a closer look and the sight that met his eyes was haunting. Hundreds of American soldiers were in the water, some in lifeboats, others on makeshift human rafts, all clearly on the brink of death. Marx immediately reported the dire situation. It was only then that the US Navy realized their 10,000-ton, $10 million warship had sunk four days ago without anyone noticing. 
In response, the U.S. Navy launched a large-scale rescue effort. Although Lieutenant Marks had completed his mission, he faced a moral dilemma. His plane could land on the water, but strict standing orders prohibited landing on the open ocean due to the dangers posed by large swells. Despite the risks, Marks knew time was running out for the survivors, who lacked the luxury of waiting for the ship-based rescue. From the air, Marks could see numerous corpses among the living, circling sharks and red blooms in the water, marking the spots where they had already struck. In a moment of extraordinary compassion, Marx asked his crew to vote on whether to adhere to the standing order and return to base, or break the rule and attempt to land the aircraft. Unanimously, the crew voted to defy the order and attempt the daring rescue. Lieutenant Adrian Marx executed the daring landing of his plane on the water, navigating through challenging conditions. The aircraft bounced off a 3.5-meter wave before settling unsteadily in the water. Marx and his crew immediately began taxiing around the survivors, pulling those in the worst condition into the plane. When there was no more space inside, they used parachute cord to lash as many men as possible to the wings. Throughout that night, rescue ships started arriving and the remaining survivors were pulled from the water, along with the mutilated bodies of their fallen comrades. Out of the 1,195 men aboard the USS Indianapolis when it was torpedoed, only 316 survived. Remarkably, 56 of them were directly saved by Adrian Marks and his crew. The risky landing rendered their plane unflyable, and after rescuing all the survivors, the USS Cecil J. Doyle sank it with a volley from its guns. Despite the heroic efforts of Mark and his crew, the aftermath saw controversy. Captain Charles McVeigh II, the captain of the USS Indianapolis, found himself court-martialed. He faced charges of putting his ship and crew in danger by failing to implement the zigzag tactic, a routine maneuver used to confuse enemy submarines in hostile waters. The story of Captain Charles McVeigh II and the USS Indianapolis is a tragic tale marked by controversy and redemption. McVeigh, the ship's captain, faced a court-martial and conviction for the loss of his ship due to enemy action. The decision had a lasting impact on his career and reputation contributing to his suicide in 1968. However, years later, a sixth grader named Hunter Scott dedicated himself to studying the sinking of the Indianapolis. Inspired by the story, Scott gathered evidence that suggested McVeigh had been treated unfairly. Notably, McVeigh's superiors had failed to inform him about the presence of Japanese submarines along his route, making zigzagging necessary only in hostile waters. McVeigh had also requested a destroyer escort for the journey, which was denied. In 2000, President Bill Clinton exonerated Captain McVeigh based on the evidence presented by Scott before Congress. This acknowledgement helped rectify the perception that McVeigh had been unfairly scapegoated for the tragedy. The wreck of the USS Indianapolis lost in the deep waters near the Mariana Trench remained undiscovered for decades. In 2017, a civilian team funded by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen located the final resting place of the legendary ship, three and a half miles beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean. The story also carries a message of hope. As of the recording of the video, one survivor of the sinking, veteran Harold Bray, was still alive. In 2023, Bray reached out to Kido Kasimi, the last surviving crew member of the Japanese submarine I-58. Despite being sworn enemies on opposite sides of the tragedy, Bray's letter conveyed forgiveness, friendship, and gratitude. Kasimi responded with a heartwarming reply, highlighting that even in times of political division, humans can find common ground. The tale of the USS Indianapolis is one of bravery, tragedy, redemption, and the enduring capacity for compassion and understanding.